Thanks for coming. I'm joined today by Craig Lapsley, Bob Barry and local member Russell North. Today is day 50 of fires in Gippsland. So this has been a long, tough haul. The fire in the pit started on February the 9th. I know that it's been frustrating for the people of Morwell. It's been frustrating for the firefighters and their support team. But it's also frustrating and disappointing that this fire was deliberately lit. The police have had now a number of leads from the community in regards to this deliberately lit fire and we thank the community for coming forward to assist police. I have to say that this has been the most coordinated effort that I've seen from a firefighting effort. DEPI, CFA, Parks Vic and the MFB all contributing to be part of this team to assist in putting out this fire. In addition to this, we've had firefighters coming in from Queensland, New South Wales, ACT, Tasmania and South Australia to help the Victorian teams contain this fire. Backed up by enormous support teams. The Ambos, Red Cross, St John's, they have done an amazing job. The strategies that have been put forward by the Fire Services Commissioner Craig Lapsley and the Fire Chiefs right across the board are slowly starting to work. In fact, the fire is now 85% less than what it was at the peak. So that's great news for the people of Morwell. It's some relief for the firefighters as well that those strategies put in place are now starting to see great results. I think that it's a great tribute to the firefighters and the patience of the people uh, of Morwell to get to this particular point. We will not rest, however, until all of the fire is completely out. We still have some way to go. Today, as you can see, the wind is starting to pick up and today will be one of those telling days. And we hope that with the amount of resources that are part of this firefighting effort that we put in today, will ensure that the fire and the wind that's uh, around will be contained. I'll now hand over to Bob Barry to give a brief from the Incident Control Centre. Thanks Minister. Um, as the Minister has said, today is a very difficult day for us on the line. Uh, the wind change that came through just after 10 this morning uh, will, be, um, will, will set us back slightly, um, but not too far, hopefully. Uh, and we'll continue to move forward. Uh, our suppression tactics on the ground are working quite well. Our team approach to this incident uh, with the um, interstate forces as well as our own is working, working quite well. And uh, we should be able to continue to move forward um, uh, in the weather that we will get over the next few days. But as I said today, we could step backwards a little bit. Uh, hopefully not too far because uh, the good work that's been done has actually sees less fire on the ground than what there was when uh, at the early stages of this incident. So we'll keep up the good work, we'll continue to move forward. If we can continue to move past the 85%, we'll work towards uh, handing back to the mine at some stage um, uh, the, um, the mine bases, particularly the northern and southern batters. The mines are continuing to put water mains in place to support us, and as they go in, we can step back from those areas and concentrate on the other hotspots, particularly on the floor of the mine. But there's been fantastic work done by the ground crews to date, as I said, from all, all the states that are involved, Tasmania, New South Wales, ACT, Queensland and South Australia, together with our own MFB, DEPI and CFA, have been doing a fantastic effort and uh, not a truer word spoken that uh, this year we, we work as one. That's it, thank you. Okay, thanks Bob. Um, I think the most important thing is uh, we're, not, uh, we're not there, but we're close. And uh, so to Morwell residents, um, stick with us. Uh, the next few days will tell the story of when this fire will actually be out. Uh, then I suppose it's about uh, how we support the Morwell community in cleanup. Uh, and that's still a step away, but without a doubt the work that firefighters have done, the morale around our crews is something that's exceptional. 
and have been well supported by Ambulance Victoria and Victoria Police and other agencies. So it is a true team effort and when you look at what's been uh, brought together in a way in which we've deployed uh, resources but different resources to do different parts of the firefighting, I think that's something that uh, over the next few weeks we'll explain that because it just hasn't been about water, it's been about water and foam, it's been about big trucks, little trucks, it's been about aerial appliances and helicopters, it's been about people on the ground with hose lines. So it's deployed all of those things to get to the point where we're at. Uh, the next few days will be the telling time. We'd like to think that uh, over the weekend we would be able to say this fire is out, but it's too early to say that. But let's, uh, let's make sure that uh, we give the support to our firefighters that they deserve, which we're doing. Uh, great teams doing great things. Thank you. Can you give us a bit of an idea of exactly what's going on? There was concern about the southern batters uh, as well as the northern northeastern. Where are you at in terms of physically this fire? Um, well, it's still in the northern batters, only a small part now, so that's been reduced and that's been a primary objective of the incident controllers as they've come on, on and off. Uh, Bob Barry's the current incident controller, been on for the last four days, and their key focus in the four days was to reduce the fire in the northern batters. Uh, in doing that, they've got only a small um, part now that's very hot. Uh, that's been worked on today and held due to the weather conditions. Uh, there is more uh, fire and heat in the southern batters, uh, and they'll, put, they'll move, obviously, uh, working on it now, but we'll move their attention uh, to that shortly to ensure that they secure that as well. So the northern batters has been the key, and the reason for the northern batters to be the key is that's the, uh, the most, uh, or the closest part of the mine to the mobile community. It's the, it's the part of the mine that puts up the most smoke over the community, part of the mine that puts up the most ash over the community and uh, it's, the, it's the part that normal um, community can actually see. It's adjacent to the Princess Highway, it can be seen by the road and that's been the key initiative is to get the fire out of the northern batters as the first priority, uh, working with the southern batters and then extinguishing the southern batters. So that's, uh, that's been a plan that's been in place for a number of weeks and the last four days they've been very successful at that. In, in hindsight, wind, in to the wind chain, what, can you tell us anything tangible that I might go back to Bob for that, but I think it's first worthwhile reflecting on last week. Uh, last week we had uh, weather conditions that were hotter, um, but had the wind speeds up to be similar, and saw the fire actually increase, but also come out of the mine, so we had a grass fire running out of the mine. Uh, last night uh, they did experience a small grass fire uh, near the Hazelwood Power Station. Um, due to the fact they had a good plan in place to have resources around the outer skirts of the, the mine, was able to uh, extinguish that very quickly, but it tells you about the dynamics of this uh, of this mine. Uh, it's not just about the open cut itself, it's about uh, the grasslands that are adjacent to it and also the way in which the mine uh, has rehabilitated some of, some of the land. What's the impact of the wind change on the mine? Um, actually, I might hand to Bob. Yeah, the, uh, as I said, the wind change came in this morning about uh, just after 10. Uh, and it's gone round to the, the west-southwest, which will put the smoke back over the mall community today. And that will continue for the rest of the day. Um, the wind strength will stay up until at least 6 o'clock tonight, when they're predicted to abate, and hopefully then move into the next few days. Uh, in relation to what we've done today, um, we've done significant planning to cater for the wind, both, what, both the wind change and the top period after. We've, we're actually through the wind change now, so the, the heightened level of preparedness can, although we've got to stay on standby, where the tension is off us now that the wind change has occurred. So there were fears that it would trigger grass fires today. That hasn't happened. Are you confident that won't happen? We've had no fires and no escapes from the mines with the wind change. Um, so therefore the, the um, threat to the actual power station itself uh, has reduced considerably. But uh, we will continue our presence there to make sure we get through the whole day without any uh, without any escapes. It's really a severe. massive firefighting effort at the moment. Uh, is uh, is firefighter fatigue and people being forced to work consecutive days becoming a concern for you guys? Firefighter, firefighter fatigue is always an issue for us. I'll just state again: the number one priority for us at this firefight is the safety of our personnel and the well-being of our personnel from all ages. And we're very strong on that. We change our crews out of the mine every two hours. So they come out, they're medically tested before they go in. They work two hours, they're medically tested again. They rest for two hours, they're medically tested before they go back in. And then they work another two hours. They can only work four rotations. So fatigue for them on the, on the ground is being managed.
for the other people around them, fatigue is also being managed from the incident, man uh, incident management level right down to the coal base. Is it a growing concern the longer the firefighters are active? Uh, look, yeah, we are managing our resources quite well. There are certain periods that impact on us greater. Uh, this weekend is a long weekend, so from our perspective, uh, there will be an impact in relation to resourcing, but we're, we're continuing the fight at the moment. It's our focus, and we are still resourcing to protect our abilities. Hi, Dad, are you able to uh, just comment on, um, in hindsight, given what you know now, I guess, but did you underestimate this fire in the very early part of the day, in a very early part? Um, no, I don't think we did, and I'll, I'll explain why I think that. Um, on the 9th of February, we had a fire that ran down the Princess Highway. We also had a second fire that started over in Uh Both of those fires have not only put pressure on the Hazelwood mine, they put pressure on the Yulorn open cut, and also APM, and also the township of Morwell itself. Um, so two fires in that sense. The resource management from that evening, uh, where additional resources were brought in, particularly uh, large structural type vehicles, that is aerial lines of pumpers, um, from uh, the Danny on Frankston area was critical. Uh, and they then went through a process to make sure that we had resources in open cut at Hazelwood, your lawn, and the APM mine, uh, the APM uh, mill. The APM mill was a critical firefight in its own right. That was, we, we had the potential to lose the mill in totality uh, from what was a fire adjacent to it in, in wood stocks and, uh, and wood chips. So you think about that, it was a pretty dynamic environment on the 9th, the 10th, the 11th of, of February. Uh, and uh, APM was dealt with effectively, uh, your lawn open cut took a little bit longer and uh, the fire, uh, we believe three fires were in the, in the Hazelwood open cut as a result of those grass and wood fires. So yeah, I think we've done well. Um, I, I've got no doubt in my mind that when we look back we'll, we'll understand the fire progression better. Uh, but as far as resources, uh, aircraft support, uh, and the resources we put in on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we built um, the resources for the Latrobe Valley were quite significant for the fires we had. Should the mine's operator have better prepared the land in between the mine and the power station? Uh, I haven't had a look at that yet, but I intend to, uh, and that'll obviously be part of the government inquiry. Uh, we're also doing a, a short uh, review of what is the fire management and fire prevention and fire protection um, strategies around open cuts and the adjacent land and uh, we'll complete that and hand that over to the inquiry that the government have announced. Um, I think it's premature for certainly me to make comments on that in the sense we've been focused on the extinguishment of the fire uh, but we're quite prepared to have a, a, a rigorous look at what is the fire prevention fire management around the open cut uh, a land adjacent to and the provisions of how we do plan. Are you how surprised that a month on January 9th, the D Department of State Development, Business and Innovation, as part of its one of its compliance meetings, actually inspected uh, the mine plan here? Yeah, I'm not aware of that inspection, uh, and that's something that we'll, once we've extinguished it, we'll, uh, we'll talk to that government department and understand it better. In terms of resources, have we ever seen anything like this in Australia before? Um, I think we've moved to a different level of resources. The fact we've got aviation uh, tenders from uh, multiple numbers of airports across uh, southern Australia, uh, resources from all neighbouring states, including Queensland, uh, and we're using specialist, uh, specialist equipment that haven't been used in brown coal firefighting before. So I think we have moved to a new a new area. I've got no doubt the international eye is on what's happening in, uh, in Morwell. Uh, we've got interest from right across the world about uh, brown coal firefighting, particularly in open cuts. And uh, anyone that understands the coal industry, brown coal is somewhat different than black coal. And it's uh, in particular um, uh, resonates in Victoria. Any idea what sort of help will be offered to more residents to help clean up their, their properties? Uh, there's a plan being developed now that uh, obviously we'll present to government shortly um, and we'll do that with uh, not only Latrobe City but government departments to understand what is the clean up uh, of streets, of recreation areas, how do we support uh, individual households to, to get the right equipment and support to clean up. It's a critical part for those that have relocated uh, away from more world to come back they need to know how to clean up and that'll be uh, that'll be the emphasis in the next uh, 48 hours. Are you still hoping to contain the fire by the end of the long weekend? Um, I believe we're on track for that. Uh, I think the, the progression of the of the last four days has been extremely successful. We've just got to be careful of today with the wind we've got that we don't lose ground. Uh, if we don't lose ground today, I think uh, the long weekend will see success of where we, where we land with this fire. Uh, today's wind, would you like to see more residents protect um, 
like I said, the clean-up plan will be important. It's not just about smoke over Morwell. We've got where um, ash has been uh, deposited across uh, across Morwell. Uh, it's actually inside houses. So it's on cars. It's uh, in recreation reserves. So the clean-up plan will be important to advise people when they should come back. And that's something that uh, we've nearly finalised and would uh, release in the next 48 hours. Yeah,